Okay, so part of this project is gonna be this fork swap. Right now, I don't have any of the bearings in here. This is just here to kind of get an idea of where the right height is gonna be. I'm gonna talk about the two correct ways of doing a fork swap between any two bikes. You can put any set of forks on any bike, you know, barring some very special, special circumstances. Uh, whenever it comes to conventional frames, conventional forks, so you can swap on just about anything that you, you want to do. Now some things will require a physical modification to either the lower triple or the frame to clear steering stops, or if they don't have steering stops that will match up, you'll have to add them. You really want there to be steering stops on your frame and your forks, or your, or your triples. But as far as actually getting the things mounted up, these are the only two options that are worth looking at. One is gonna be bearings and the other is gonna be swapping stems. I don't know which one we're going to do with this bike. We're gonna take it all apart and evaluate things and find out. Okay, I want this on here just because, yeah, just I just want to say it. This is a Shadow 750, a Honda Shadow 750. The forks that I'm putting on it are Triumph 675 Daytona. Now, I'm a member of lots and lots of groups uh, on Facebook and forums, uh, mostly pertaining to rebuilding, you know, older bikes like this GL500. But we, we, get, we get all sorts. Now, an almost daily conversation, especially with these older bikes, uh, with people wanting to build cafe racers and things like that out of them, they, they are asking for suggestions for suspension. They're wanting to do fork swaps or something. And all, almost, they, they, there's, in every one of them, there's that one guy who says, you should do CBR forks or some other Honda forks because be, because Honda, because then it's still Honda, Honda from one end to the other. But you have to keep it Honda or it's not right. And this is, this is, this is important because outside of some very special circumstances and examples, Honda doesn't make forks. Those forks and the forks that came on this bike, Showa. The forks that are on this GL500, those were made by Showa. The forks that came on this CX500 over here, also made by Showa. I bet I can flip that around and we might actually find the label on it. Uh... No, I don't know where it is. But the important thing is, is that you know, Honda doesn't really make a lot of their forks. Uh, Showa and Kayaba make their forks. Same thing with shocks. That shock that came off the back of that CX500 or GL500, Showa. Uh, the shocks that came off of uh, these shadows, also Showa. Here's a shock that happens to be laying here. This is off of my one of my 954 RRs, Showa. Uh, Honda does make some suspension components, some shocks, but not, not a lot. And even that, uh, like I, I can say, like this, this bike might be an exception because looking at the front hub, I can't find any other stamping on it. And this hub has the speedometer for the uh, you know the mag the the pickups for the sp speedometer integrated into it. That hub might be Honda. The rim. Is made by DID, so you're not even, yeah, you know, not even fully losing a Honda wheel. And it's, it's the same thing with like the, these old old bikes. Uh, there's uh, a lot of people who put a lot of effort into adapting these Comstars onto their, you know, into their newer suspensions. And first, I want to say they almost always look incredible. I, I love the look. And if you did it for the looks and you wanted that, that classy wheel or you're trying to keep something period specific, 
it's awesome. It looks great. If you did it because it's Honda, boy, will you be disappointed. After I put these forks into this Honda motorcycle, I'm not really losing a whole lot of Honda there. Honda doesn't really make a lot of forks. Okay, so we got our triples out. Let's move this out of the way. So now, this is the stem from the, the Honda Shadow. And the best case scenario is you adapt this stem to fit into your, your newer triples. Now, this usually will require a machinist, but um, it's, it's not, a, not a big deal. Uh, the most important things are, you know, staying clear of your bearing race. And it really only works well if your old stem, the original stem for the bike, is smaller than the new stem that's coming out. Now this is the new stem. Now this is always, to me, the first avenue you should investigate because anytime you do a fork swap, you should, I, I don't even like saying should, I, I like to say you have to, but you know, you're all grown ups I'm assuming. You really should replace your bearings. You have the whole steering stem apart, you need new bearings anyway. So while you've got it all apart, you should investigate this. Now, if the old stem is smaller, you can just have a bushing made and it'll press into place and that's the way you should go about it. There are some very um, lucky situations where you might get lucky and the new stem will just slip into your, your triples. We're going to press the, uh, the Triumph stem out and see how that goes. We'll see where we are. Now I have large sockets that I can use for this purpose. Always put something underneath that you can, you know, push your stem into unless you're lucky and you have a, a triple that's just completely flat. I've never, never been so lucky as to have a triple that's completely flat. It's always got all kinds of wonky angles I've got to figure out. Blink. Let's go see what we got. Okay, so take our old bearing race out. Set that aside. Okay, so. That's actually <clears throat> I wonder how it'll pan out if uh the stem just fits right in there. Every machinist that's watching that probably cringed. Time to break the mic out and let's measure the bearing race first. That way, 
The berry race is 30 millimeter. <laughs> the berry race on the Honda is also 30 millimeter. Let's check uh, the the wide end of because the way these these are made, this is this is the part that goes into triple, and it's flared just a tiny tiny bit. Now let's look at the bottom is 30 millimeter versus the top is 30.3 millimeter. And on our Triumph stem, <laughs> we are 0 0.02 millimeter different. I'm tempted to just press it in there. Let's press it in there, see what happens. Worst thing that happens, I crack my triple and I have to spend $20 on eBay to get a replacement. Dalton, Ben. Let's tilt it up. Wasn't even filming. Okay, so that got shut off, cut off because the phone got too hot again. Man, that never happened before. I'm gonna have to go back to filming with my old phone. Against all reasonable, reasonable expectations, the uh, the Honda stem, <laughs> the Honda stem went right into this Triumph triple. So there's even more Honda stuff on there than I expected there to be. So, if anybody else wants to do this, just swap that stem straight over. And, uh, yeah. Remember, new bearings. You got it apart. Use new bearings. Hey, not so fast. All right, so there was a hitch in doing this. <coughs> the Triumph Triple has a raised area up here. And whenever the bearing was pushed down on top of it, there was uh, not enough room to go all the way through to get all of the screws and, not screws, all the nuts on. So, uh, it, <laughs> I'm so used to seeing a problem and then just trying to address it. I, I went ahead and I cut it off and ground it down and flushed it all and completely forgot to film that and point it out. So. That is something to keep in mind. So, the stem from the Honda Shadow 750, and that kind of implies that, because I know it's a, it's a shared stem across a lot of frames, there's a good chance that the 1100s and you know uh, other bikes might be able to do the same thing. That stem pressed right into this Triumph Triple. I have reason to believe that these triples will fit um, quite a few other frames. I, I, need to, I need to measure this against 
my R6 setup. But uh, the stem, it fit. It pressed into the lower triple. It fit the bottom bearings for the, the Honda. And it fit the top bearings. It even fit the top triple. It is a nice, snug, proper fit. I really didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> I was... I, I was expecting to, uh, that, that, that's just, uh, it was not predictable. I, I was expecting to have to go about it the way I go about it with these old bikes. Like this, I fully expected this triple, I mean this stem, to per, like it, it to be like this one. This one is smaller, it's smaller on the bottom as well. I expected, actually that's welded. Uh, some of these, let's check this one. No, that's welded too. So you wouldn't have been able to do it with those. But I, I know, um, oh, I've done it with Nighthawks. I did it with my ZR7. Um, I've done it with just a couple of different bikes. You can press the stem out. You take that stem and your bottom triple from your donor to your machinist and he'll cut you a bushing to put it all together. Either that, uh, either those is way better. There's like companies out there that you have to trust that they're using good material to make your custom stem. And I know it's a hundred bucks, it's not very expensive and it's a bolt-in solution, but I have a hard time myself trusting that over using completely OEM parts in this situation. And in a lot of cases, all you have to do, and th this is what I, with the R6 front end that's on my CX500, I just, I got bearings that matched the frame and matched the stem, and it bolted right together. Those two options, using the stock stem or just using appropriate bearings, always, always better than using cu custom parts, in my opinion. Anyway, all right, so... Our suspension, I have got the geometry that I want. I am just waiting for a spring for the back. After I get that spring in, that's it. Um, I am waiting for a tank, and I'm probably going to use the same tank like what I've got on my CX500 and one of these cheap eBay tail, tails or seats. Uh, just to keep it simple, uh, you, you can get them both for a hundred bucks, um, and then hopefully you start getting to sh making the thing a little shinier and getting it back to where it's supposed to go in the way it's supposed to. Oh, and a wheel. I'm gonna have to do something about the wheels. I got to get matching wheels. I can't have laced wheels on the back and. In an alloy on the front, that's as bad as not having Honda parts on it. Jeez, we can't do that. <laughs>